So I'm going to go over the skills that we have covered with Mr. Hank. So you've got one spot that you can go back and review everything. So what we're going to do here is go over our first exercise called Relax on a Mat. And what we're looking for from Mr. Hank is for him to go into a D-O-W-N, just like that, and then rest his little chin down. Perfect, just like that. Good job. And the importance of this exercise is it's a desensitization and counter conditioning exercise. So anything that um, Mr. Hank runs into in the future that is too much for him, he'll have a tool in his toolbox and you'll have a tool that you can uh, help him work through those big emotions. So I've had folks use this for plane rides, for dog friendly hotels and really anything in between. If you've got something that really stresses him out, just get it a comfortable distance um, that he can uh, work through this. So as, as long as he's able to stay uh, in his uh, D-O-W-N. Uh, notice some dogs, their chin will pop up off the mat if it's something that really stresses them out. Even sit up, even leave the mat. And that can be a gauge um, on if you've gone too far, too fast. If they're not able to stay down on the mat, then I would get it a further distance. Um, I like to utilize this to work through sounds that stress my dog out. So you can just Google a sound, put it at the lowest volume, and then start to ratchet it up over time. And um, I like to do this in an easy environment like this, then um, work in the front yard, then take it to parks, and just help my dog uh, desensitize to any sort of environment um, that he's being placed in so that he knows that he can relax wherever he is. So a very, very powerful tool um, in your toolbox. So what we want to go over next is our clickerable exercises. And so first I want to go over his main game exercises. Hank, I just take a treat, drag it up towards my face. Then I'm just going to wait till he's distracted and say his name. You're too good. Hank, good, the perfect eye contact, very good. Um, so sometimes we'll look you in the chest, someone will look you straight in the eye. I consider both acceptable. Next, I'm going to take a treat, drag it out to the side, and make a distraction for him. Hank, good. <laughs> He's got to be able to come back even though he wants to just stare at that treat. Very good. Then I'll toss the treat. Hank. He's got to be able to turn back towards me as soon as he turns back towards me. is the clickerable moment there. Then we'll work on some recalls. So just tell me what I'm called. Hank, come. Good job. This is the only one that you don't have to click on. You can um, just give them a treat when they come up. If you'd like to click, I like to click in this moment here. Hank, come. In the moment that uh, Hank looks at you, um, that is usually the most beneficial time. Another time, uh, if you don't want to do that, would be Hank, come, and clicker when he gets up to you. So usually I'll click as they're turning towards me, distraction is the problem. If they don't understand the proximity, then they have to come all the way up to me. I'll clicker uh, when they get all the way up there just to show that uh, that's what I'm looking for and make that my criteria. Hank, sit. Hank, down. Hank, stay. Ah. Hank, stay. Free. Good job. Um, so the uh, stay can be tricky for Mr. Hank. That's fine. We're working through that. Um, what you're going to want to do is just get it to where he's having successful repetitions. If he ever has issues, you can always um, just shorten up the distance. Stay. Free. And shorten up the amount of time um, that you're staying back. So just reduce that criteria, uh, distance and duration. You can make either of those a little bit easier and um, just get those successful repetitions. Uh, to really make it clear as to what you're looking for and that will build the most quick success actually is actually not getting super far away for super long periods of time right at the beginning you just want to get those successful repetitions one after another 
Hey, touch. So we've got his targeting exercise where um, he will follow my hand. Hey, touch. And we can get Mr. Hank positioned wherever we need him to go just by uh, putting our hand out there. Uh, this is the beginning of agility training, so going inside, outside, pulls, up ramps, all that good stuff. Um, all starts with this. Hey. Space. This is our anti-jumping exercise. We want to make sure that um, they have a command to give us about a two-foot bubble around us so that a pup doesn't jump up on us. And I really like to use this as a preventative measure and utilize it beforehand. So uh, jumping up can be reinforcing. So if we're able to catch it beforehand, it can really be advantageous for um, letting them do the right thing before they've already done the wrong thing. If a dog does happen to jump up, I will tell them space. Um, but ideally, uh, really prefer to catch them before they have a chance to do that. So let's try one from behind. Hey, space. That's fine. You'll notice he did a thing here where he kind of circled around the side. Some dogs will circle up to the front. That's fine. My only criteria is the two-foot bubble. Let's try one from the side. Space. Good. Um, so he was just outside my bubble there. I would consider that okay. But if Hank were to get too close, then... Um, no clip, no treat is really good information for him as well. Hey, space. Good job. You did a great job backing up on that one. Very good job, sir. Um, so I, I prefer to not, you know, uh, approach towards my dog, but just to um, proof it and see what he'll do within that circumstance. If he really would give me space, I'd like to see what he'll do. Uh, but it can be kind of intimidating throw stepping towards your dog. So, um, I'll check in on occasion, but prefer not to um, step towards my dog. Again, it's just kind of a, an intimidation tactic. He's got a really good space commit at this point, so he knows I'm not just marching towards him. Um, he's got some, some good trust with me. But anyway, uh, just a, a side note on that, that you don't want to be marching towards your dog. Leave it. Good. Um, so he's got a, a solid leave it at this point. Leave it. Very crucial. Um, and also what you're going to want to do is, is utilize as many different things as you can. It will really help him to uh, make a broad-based generalization. He needs to leave anything. Leave it. Good. You'll notice on that as well, he already got the stick in his mouth. So I've just used a leave it and a drop it interchangeably. If he's going after something or he has something, I tell him leave it and he's supposed to leave it. So as he's approaching this, we can tell him leave it as well. Leave it. Very good. Sir. Very good. So Mr. Hank has done a very, very good job. Um, he is quite a champion. Um, we'll sign off here, get him leashed up, and then we'll, we'll go outside and uh, go where his loose leash walking. Good job, sir.